So our third speaker is Mark Warren. Uh, Mark serves as Optivia's Senior Study Director and Senior Principal Investigator. He oversees Optivia's transport studies and develops cell-based and membrane vesicle-based transporter assays. Prior to joining Optivia, Mark was Principal Investigator at Xenoport, where he developed a variety of cell-based assays for investigating human uh, SLC uptake transporters and ABC efflux transporters, and most notably, Mark was involved in the development of <laughs> Horizon, the prodrug of gabapentin, which uses active uptake transporters in the GI tract to improve bioavailability over the parent molecule. So Mark received his BS in genetics from UC Davis and his MS and PhD in chemistry from UC San Diego. Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, Les. So I'm gonna be talking about drug-induced liver injury. I really don't need to give much of an introduction to this audience because if you look through the abstract booklet, probably the biggest key word you'll find out there is DILI, drug-induced liver injury. It's the most common reason drugs in development fail. It's the most common reason drugs that have been um, approved and are on the market are removed from the market. But where this really comes about, what is cholestasis? Cholestasis is simply anything that's going to interfere with the normal bile flow. This can just cause a mild effect, sort of a transient effect, or it can lead to something causing more severe hepatocellular damage. And drug-induced liver injury is often very difficult to predict. Um, fairly obviously, since the number of talks and presentations on this at this meeting. So we tried to come up with a little bit more integrated approach that I'll talk about. So the first, I just want to give a little bit of in introduction, the effects of drugs on bile salt clearance and hepatocytes. So if we look at just the normal bile flow, so bile salts or bile acids are taken into hepatocytes from the plasma, primarily by NTCP, with a little bit of assistance from the OATP transporters. In the hepatocyte, the bile salts are moved into the cannulicolus by BCEP and conjugates use MRP2. So this normal flow of bile into the cannulicolus, they go to the gallbladder, they aid in digestion, come back into the plasma. But drugs use the same sort of transporters. Drugs can get into the liver by OATP1B1 or NTCP, as well as other SLC transporters. Once they're in the hepatocyte, they can be metabolized, and either the drug or the metabolite can be transported by NTC, or by various MRPs, various ABC transporters, even BCEP occasionally. And so bile salts and drugs are using the same pathway. So in order to better understand this, we've combined two approaches to better understand DILI. Mechanistic transporter models, we're using MDCK cells that are transfected with a variety of transporters that are involved in the hepatic clearance of drugs, as well as bile salts. These include the OATPs, BCEP, NTCP, and others. And we're using the HRL hepatocyte co-culture models. So first, looking at the contribution of individual transporters to torcholate transport, our representative bile acid here. If you look, we can use these MDCK cells and put a single transporter in. We have on the left, GFP control where we have no transporter and we have either NTCP, OATP, 1B1 or uh, BCEP by itself. And if we look at that and we look at the transcellular transport, the amount of drug that's making its way from the baselateral chamber to the apical chamber, we see very little transport. We can look at combinations of two of these drugs and if we have NTCP and BCEP now we have NTCP taking it in and BCEP efluxing it out. So we get very high levels of transcellular transport. If we don't have both of these transporters included, we simply don't see this. But if OATP1B1 is there, we will see intracellular accumulation. So we see high levels of intracellular accumulation, which decreases in the presence of BCEP. So it gets in by the influx transporter, by NTCP, it gets effluxed um, by BCEP. We can also look at, these are the same two graphs from the previous slide, 
the apical efflux where we're localizing the effect of the apical efflux transporter. So we're effectively looking at, um, compared to the intracellular concentration, how much is actually being effluxed. Because one of the points that's often neglected is what BCEP sees isn't the concentration in the plasma, it's the concentration inside the cell. And so the plasma concentration doesn't necessarily matter so much. It's the intracellular concentration that's important for BCEP. So we looked at a variety of drugs that have known DILI liability. And we looked at the transcellular transport, the intracellular accumulation, and the direct apical efflux. And I'm really just gonna focus on one of these, rifampicin. So if we look in this model, which is expressing NTCP, BCEP, and OATP1B1, we see if we have 50, 50 micromolar rifampicin, we see a dramatic decrease in the apical flow of toracolate. If we look at the intracellular accumulation, we see a very high increase. And the apical flux, we can see a remarkable uh, decrease. Let's talk about rifampicin. It's a BDCCS class one drug. So it's high, high permeability, um, high solubility. It's extensively uh, metabolized in the liver to a metabolite desacetyl rifampicin. The clearance is mostly hepatic and very high biliary concentrations of this molecule. It's also a very good inhibitor of the OATPs, MRPs, as well as BCEP. So if we ask, what is the effect rifampicin has? Well, rifampicin, it's not transported by NTCP, BCEP, or OATP1B1. If we look at the transcellular transport compared to our control, we see no real difference. If we look at the intracellular accumulation, we see no real difference. So rifampicin being class one drugs, transporters don't really matter, except when they do. So to this model, we added MDR1 encoding PGP. And if we look at the transcellular transport, MRP1 or MRP1 in combination with the other transporters, we see much increased uh, transport of rifampicin. If we look at the intracellular accumulation, it's much lower in the presence of MDR1. So effectively, PGP is protecting the hepatocyte from the effects of rifampicin. It's not, we have the same experiment with the met metabolite desacetyl rifampicin, where we see about a five-fold decrease in rifampicin concentration and about a 12-fold decrease in the metabolite concentration in the presence of PGP. So effectively, PGP may be one of the key determinants in determining the hepatic concentration and in determining the toxicity of rifampicin. So shown here, PGP, in this model, we have the OATP1B1, NTCP, and BCEP, and we have the same transporters in combination with PGP, and we're looking at the cellular concentration of toracolate. We see the PGP is effectively decreasing the concentration, not, by make, not because toracolate is a substrate of PGP, but because it's decreasing the concentration of rifampicin, which, when it's inside the cell, is inhibiting BCEP. So the question, is there a synergistic effect between rifampicin, comeds, and blocking bile salt hepatic clearance? There's some papers in literature about this where the incident of liver injury in patients taking pyrazinamide and rifampicin is four times higher than those taking rifampicin alone. And HIV-infected TB patients taking protease inhibitors have much higher rates of liver injury than patients TB patients only taking rifampicin. So we ask the question, what happens if we look at the protease inhibitors? Well, protease inhibitors, lopinavir, ritonavir, inhibit PGP. So we see more rifampicin building up. So we have the cells with, um, so we're looking at the cell intracellular concentration. So our control with PGP and with PGP inhibited, we see this increase. So these results suggest that compounds co-administered rifampicin 
may aggravate rifampicin hepatotoxicity. So these cell-based models give you these ideas, but they don't confirm hepatotoxicity. So for this information, we turn to our collaboration with Jarell, looking at these hepatocyte co-cultures. Conditions are shown here. We looked at a variety of drugs in the presence or absence of bile acids, incubation time, one hour, 24 hours, or 48 hours, and several different measures of um, looking at toxicity. And one of the best measures of that we found was looking at albumin secretion. So if we look at the albumin secretion without any drugs present or in the presence of bile acid mixture, we see no difference. We see no change in albumin secretion, um, no hepatotoxicity. In the presence of these drugs, um, we see increasing or decreasing albumin secretion, indicating hepatotoxicity. So the system is working, we can measure that. And we ask, what's the effect of cyclosporin A? With, without, and with bile acid present. Cyclosporin A by itself, we see the hepatotoxicity, but the bile acids potentiate or increase the hepatotoxicity seen for cyclosporin A. Same thing for the case of ritonavir, where ritonavir and ritonavir plus or ritonavir in the blue, ritonavir plus the bile acids in red, we're increasing the hepatotoxicity. For a compound like Bosenton, we see that over one day, we don't so much see much of a difference, but over two days, after two days incubation, you can really see the distinction here, where the toxicity is greatly enhanced by the presence of the bile salts. Same thing for rifampicin. It's actually rifampicin, sorry. Um, we're looking at rifampicin one day culture with and without bile acids. We don't really see too much of a difference, but in the presence of ritonavir, we see this great potentiation. Again, the ritonavir, it's inhibiting um, PGP, which is present in these hepatocytes, allowing more of the rifampicin in the rifampicin is inhibiting the uptake transporters, which cause more of the bile acids to build up in the hepatocyte, indicating the hepatotoxicity. So in summary, the clearance of the bile salts is really very heavily dependent upon transporters. And this effect can be direct in terms of moving it like NTCP and BCEP, or it can be indirect as a case of PGP. The drug-induced inhibition um, can cause blockage of the bile salt hepatic clearance, resulting in cholestasis, or if the bile salts build up in the hepatocyte, the detergent-like properties of them will um, cause hepatocellular damage. Our mechanistic transporter models can show the potential cholestatic risk of drugs, while the Hurel hepatic co-cultures can confirm the hepatotoxicity. So we tested several drugs in this, and um, we were able to see the toxicity. So again, using the mechanistic models in combination with the hero culture models really gives us something that neither model by itself would be able to do. We can determine the hepatotoxicity and the exact mechanism for that. So the well-defined models in combination with the hero hepatocytes, um, cultures, um, really helped to us to a answer these questions.